Hey, good day everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borick and this is going to be a Flyers emotionally splitting 2-1 to one OT loss post-game reaction as I am Pro Joe from Sports Fanatic News and SteelFlyers.com and Flyers Nitty Gritty and Chasing the Pennant podcast. For anybody that likes baseball, please check us out there as well and I'll have a lot of baseball stuff pretty soon, excuse me, coming up on this channel. And right after this video, I have with um, e Money from On the Money podcast, the great E Money, our midseason award show where we go over the Vezina, the Jack Adams, the Hart, and all the other pivotal key awards, the top key awards uh, in the league uh, for the midseason award show. So please check that out as well. We really appreciate your support and check out E Money's On the Money podcast. That will be coming out the midseason award show right after I release this one. I'm going to try to get it out around twelve to twelve fifteen uh, today. So it'll be coming out right after this. But unfortunately, the Flyers, the weather is much nicer outside than that emotionally splitting game uh, was with the Flyers. I mean, they lost 2-1 in OT and honestly played uh, their best 60 <clears throat> uh, they could play. They outshot the Isles 37-15. to uh, Patrick looked the best he's looked in a while, really uh, playing well along the boards, getting some steals, creating a lot of offensive chances. Obviously, Lindblom potting one of the goals, uh, has three goals in his last three games. So there's positives there with them continuing to look good. Um, it's just the way in which we lost this game. Uh, we really torched them in regulation. And then J.J. kind of said it perfectly on the broadcast after Jim Jackson. It seemed like the Flyers were playing three-on-three -three hockey while at four-on-four. They just didn't know after they had a four-on-three for the first ten seconds of OT, <coughs> excuse me, that um all of a sudden it stays at four-on-four -four instead of going back to three-on-three. -three until a last whistle, which you just never had, circumstantially, in that OT. So I think the Flyers um, laid a goose egg when it comes to overtime, but played their best 60. So like everything I've been seeing around Twitter from Sarchidi, Jamie, the great Jamie Bascal, and everybody I think is correct, well, you just have to build on the positives from this game, but it's also too late in the season to really go for moral victories. When you have a shorter season, a condensed season like this, you're coming into crunch time quicker than ever. Uh, you really got to make the moves now and make the moves to make your team the hottest and the best it can be right now. Uh, Ghost had a big turnover to cost us the game. Other than that, I thought he played well, but it's just hard to remember um, pass play. I understand that from people that are going to say that uh, when uh, you're a guy that had a big part in the play that ended up uh, costing us there at the end. Um, it's just the way this game was lost. If we lost an OT where we outplayed them in 60, the shots were 4-4, four to four, and we were really battling, and Sorokin was the answer again in overtime. Like, I think he was the biggest answer in regulation to really beat the Flyers. The Flyers probably would have won this game in regulation. Uh, not with Varley in, because both of those goalies, uh, the Islanders might be one of the teams in the lead to win the Masterson right now for their goaltenders. But... Um, when it comes to other goalies around the league, I think if you didn't have as hot of a goalie as Sorokin is right now, uh, you would have been able to potentially get that W in regulation. But that's not an excuse. You still got to find ways to beat a hot goaltender. Um, maybe being able to, like my great friend uh, Mike said, I don't know if he wants me to say his last name, but I'll just say Mike. Um, you have to shoot it a little bit more uh, when you're on the power play or on two-on-one -on rushes rather than always looking for the pass. Those are very good points and points of what I pretty much mostly agree with where you have to shoot. I thought yesterday we did shoot it a lot more, but not on odd rushes, on odd man rushes. For some reason, on odd man rushes, we kept looking to pass the puck rather than just take the initial shot. That's something that I always think. If you have the initial shot, and the goalie is usually going to be leaning pass in those situations, if you have a great shot, you should try to take it. The time you should go for the pass is when the defender is leaning towards you for the shot, and then you can just kind of slide the pass right over. So that's just the way I feel about that. Other people can feel differently, but I feel you should go for the shot most of the time there, more than guys usually do, because the defender, 9 out of 10, as well as the goaltender, usually is going to be leading, leaning pass. But this team, we just have to rebound. The Flyers got the New Jersey Devils this evening as um, the Flyers play the Devils in Philadelphia, so that's a benefit uh, in front of the hometown crowd at 15-11-4 right now. The Devils are at 11-14-4. and four. Um, This is a team that hasn't had a lot of guys healthy throughout the season, 
and they're a team that I think is a little bit better <clears throat> than the record shows where if everybody was healthy, their goaltending did not go out with COVID being Mackenzie Blackwood. Um, I think uh, they would have been in a much better, they could have been more towards a 500 record. Let's put it that way. I don't think they're a team that would have made the playoffs or anything special like that. But they're at 11, 14, and 4 right now. Uh, that team definitely could have been more like 500 one game over with how they uh, play and how they actually look pretty shod in Lindy Ruff's <coughs> system, excuse me, um, in their in his first year. But they just haven't, unfortunately, for the Devils, had health and had the greatest luck when it comes to, obviously, the COVID protocol. So I think that's heavily affected them this year. This is not a team you can take uh, for advantage at all. But I'll talk about that more um, in my preview to the Flyers and Devils. When it comes to wrapping up this game, I would say the star of the game, the first star of the game, has to be Ilya Sorokin of the Islanders. I mean, he made 36 saves. He only let one go in, which was a goal that he wasn't going to stop. and ended up going off a of Lindblom uh, in front as Lindblom smartly crashed the net on another assist, a nice assist from Claude Giroux, who was a man possessed yesterday. Uh, G this year is honestly having <clears throat> a pretty darn solid um, season when it comes to production. Obviously, uh, since he's come back from the COVID list, he's actually potted a decent amount of more goals, but Giroux's just not going to be that carrying. Uh, yesterday, he stepped up to do it a little bit more, but 24 points in 28 games, he's only four points less than a points per game. But the guys like Farabee, what JVR are, they're more of the guys that have been carrying and taking that carrying weight that... Um, let's just kind of put the team on our back mentality that Giroux did in his younger years. That's not really what G is anymore, but what he still is, is a damn good player to have on your team. The captain of the team, a guy that chips in, is right there behind JVR and Faraby in terms of production. So I think he's a guy that doesn't that gets too much flack sometimes and not enough credit for how good of a player he still is. Uh, Jake Voracek, Jacoby, uh, over 16 minutes a night, has 23 points in 27 games. So I think the Vets um, are doing a little bit better than we give them credit for. It's just when it comes to Jake, um, I would like to see his defensive numbers start trending back towards where they were last year uh, rather than where they are this year, and the same goes for Kevin Hayes. His offense has looked all right. Same with Jake Voracek. Love what they're doing on offense. I would just like to see their defense, well, not, not in every game, but primarily 21 points and 23 points, respectively, for Voracek. I would just like to see them trend where their defensive numbers were last year rather than having them sit where they are this year. But again, Sorokin's the star of the game in that game. Um, when it comes to, in a losing effort, I would say three goals in three games. I would give Oscar Lindblom uh, the third star of that game for being able to get that done. And then when it comes to uh, the second star of the game, I would say, unfortunately, since the Isles won and it was on the wraparound by Bavillier, he would have to go to the person with the winning goal, which would normally get the first star. Uh, except for Ilya Sorokin decided to turn into Dominic Hasek pretty much yesterday and beat the Flyers um, single-handedly in regulation uh, when they halfway outplayed the Islanders. So he gets the first star. Bavillier for winning the game gets the second star. And the third star goes to Oscar Lindblom, who has three goals in three games for the Flyers. The Flyers must, must, must turn it around with a W tonight. You can't keep no more moral victories. They don't do much for you at this point of the season when you're coming into crunch time. So must get the W tonight. Stay tuned later this afternoon. Uh, later, late this afternoon, for my Flyers and Devils preview to the game this evening. This has been a reaction to Flyers and Islanders emotionally splitting two to one loss, as it was emotionally splitting because in the beginning and in regulation we outplayed them great. It made us feel pretty good going into OT, and then in OT we just laid a goose egg, got out shot four nothing, and lost on a wraparound to Anthony Bavillier after a turnover of all things again, a defensive turnover. So that's why it was so emotionally splitting. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm Joe Bork, a.k.a. Projo for Sports Fanatic News, SteelFlyers.com, Flyers of Degrady, and Chasing the Pennant for all my baseball people. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe to all those places. And check out eMoney's podcast on the Money Podcast as well, and stay tuned for the midseason award show that I will be posting right after this video at about 12.15 Eastern this afternoon. So again, enjoy all the hockey, and as always, stay healthy and stay safe. Peace out, everybody.